Hello, Lola's. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Guys, let's do a little sit and chat, a rock and chat. Um, I have baby Zendi with me, of course. <laughs> See, of course. See, I'm the new guy, so I spend a lot of time in my mommy's lap. <laughs> so, um, the... I'm going to answer some of the questions that I've gotten in comments over the last couple of weeks. I did a Q&A, a live Q&A. Um, I had decided to do that in the uh, chatterbox and then I recorded while I was doing the live. So I then of course densed it down, condensed it to a smaller live and um, or video and then I put it in the first first tier has like a quick preview of it's like 30 minutes though of a video of that Q&A and then I did the live stream but most of those questions were on everything not just dolls it was like a little bit of doll stuff but it, it ended up being because it was me and my daughter so it was a lot more like relationships and just life things as well and so it was kind of funny um a lot of tmi <laughs> um but we had fun um and i do that sometimes like in in there i'll do a girls night well, I used to. I haven't did it in a long time. We would do girls night or just have fun. It's just, just nice to just have fun. So, um, but one of the questions, I'm going to start with the first question. But before I get into that, I want to stay. I want to invite you guys to the Chatterbox. Um, it is $1.99 to join the first tier. And then it's $4.99 to join the next level. Of course, the first tier is more of a support tier and it's videos and updates in there. Um, the second tier is live streams, videos, updates, everything. So second tier gets everything from the first tier and more, if that makes sense. Um, so please, please go join if you want to support my channel. I've been doing YouTube for um, since 2000 and 13 I think um, so I've been doing YouTube for a very long time um, and I think the paid channel membership is just a nice way to kind of help the YouTube creators continue to um, make the time to create content um, all around um, not just for those exclusive videos and live streams and early updates and stuff in the first to get a peek at certain things sometime um but just to support the creator overall and then also you may see a super thanks and um shout out to riri nursery she actually did a super thanks um on one of my videos a while back so i never got a chance to do a shout out to her for th for doing the super thanks um which you can do on any video which is really really nice um you know the comment section is a way that i kind of interact and i kind of get to know people a little bit more sometimes because people share stories about themselves and you know or their thought process on whatever video I'm doing. So I really, really love my comment section. So um, I love everybody that just view because some people don't want to be commenting or anything like that. And I can understand that. And I appreciate you guys too. But I do really start to get to know people, personalities and a little bit more about them throughout their comments um, on my channel. So anyway, shout out to Riri. It's R-I-R-I -R -I Nursery. Um, so, um, but back to the questions, one of the questions, I hadn't heard this one in a while, but someone asked, how did I first introduce my, um, hobby to my significant other? Um, so 
the very first doll that I bought was, well, the very first doll I bought was a mini, a silicone mini from Lorna Miller Sands off of eBay. Um, I don't know if she was the seller, I don't remember, but it was, that's what sculpt it was. And I bought it off of eBay and it came and it was in a little box and it was really little, but it didn't come first. I also bid it on Walter by Laura Tudor Ross um, that was painted by Connie Price, Prince, Connie Prince, Connie Prince. I think um and I that doll came um well I, I outbid it and then I the first person didn't pay so I got the second bid highest bidder and I, I bought it and I think it was under two hundred dollars and so fully rooted and everything I know back then whoa prices was so much better um so I got the doll and well it was coming and I was just moving into this house and I don't even think I had no the house wasn't even fully furnished or anything like I didn't have <laughs> I didn't have living room furniture or anything so anyway the doll the doll was coming um I made sure I was here because I was actually moving in that day and I made sure someone was here to get the package and it came and I opened it by myself of course and um anyway i'm taking out through the whole picture it's sicily 1932 um but long story short uh, when he came over one day i just had the baby laying out on the bed and he was like oh and he was like um that's he was like he was like uh that's nice or something I, he made some comment i don't remember exactly and i said i love I've always wanted these type dolls and he you know he didn't say much we didn't really get into it much but then I think it's when I got Paris he was like oh that's a pretty doll he's always loved Paris me more and so then he said okay how many of these things are you gonna get and he was like I think you got enough and at this top point I think I had like three and I was just like well I'm a doll collector I love dolls and every time I see one, it looks like this. And, that. and then, of course, he didn't know how much they were costing me or anything. So I just just had them out. And then we it just started the conversation. Um, but I do want to say that we've had our ebbs and flows in the relationship pertaining to the doll hobby. Um, you know, at first he was like, okay, that's cute. You know, he was, he said, I mean, he said, there's nothing weird about that. It's a hobby is what he said. And so, because I asked him, I asked him straight up, I said, do you think I'm weird for, you know, you know, playing with these dolls? And he said, no, it's a hobby. And he said, everybody should have a hobby. So that's how it started out. And then he also, um, we were out of town one time with the kids and the kids begged to go to, I think, a get Goodwill um, while we were out of town and so we went there we took them there and he actually was picking out little outfits for um, Walter and the babies and he was like can't one of your little babies wear this and stuff and I thought it was cute and so um, it was nice he actually did that I actually kind of forgot about that and so it really felt good to me to feel like he respected my hobby and he was happy that I had something I love now the downside was at one point things were getting a little crazy and um you know the economy is always up and down and stuff and he felt like I was spitting too much um because his idea was that each baby needed about one or two outfits and that's it they didn't need all these clothes and he did like that I used to thrift for them originally. Um, he thought it was a great idea because even one time I said, I feel kind of bad because I'm taking from real babies getting, you know, good buys and clothes. And he said, hey, he said, you got to save money too. So blah, blah, blah. But at one point he did feel like I was spending too much money on the dolls. And um, he made a few little comments about it. And I was... 
irritated to say the least. I felt like um, I could do whatever I want. This is my money. But, you know, being in a long term relationship, it doesn't really work like that. Um, you do have to be considerate of your partner and stuff. Well, I think you should. And um, so we we um, we talked about it and um, I lied about it. <laughs> Okay, I'm just saying. I mean, I just was like, you know, you know, not all the dolls I buy, you know, that's a typical story we tell, you know. This artist really likes me, so she sends me one for free. Hey, I'm just being honest. I did. Um, but then, you know, I kind of got to the point where I started hiding them. So I had my master suite bedroom was upstairs, and I hadn't moved in that yet. I was sleeping in the guest bedroom downstairs because... Also, I had just had major surgery and I could not climb the steps, so I had to stay downstairs. And plus, we hadn't furnished the upstairs yet because I, you know, I was I had to be downstairs anyway. But once I got able to climb the stairs and stuff, I had a, a, a playpen up there and I used to put the babies up there. And every time I knew he was coming to visit, um, I would put the babies all the babies that suffer like one or two in the, the the playpen and so for months maybe even the first year because I, when, it took me forever before I moved up to my master bedroom but I kept my babies upstairs hidden from him and he never went upstairs he never went upstairs for anything so it was it was safe you know, they wasn't covered up or anything like that. They were just in the playpen. Um, one day, he had to go up there for something. And he wanted to check out something. I don't know. And he went up there and I was like, oh, and I was thinking to myself, please don't let him walk over to the bassinet. And so, the playpen. And so, sure enough, he walked over there and he goes, oh, let me see what babies, what you, he said, what, oh, you got a playpen up here? And he he said, um, oh, I know. He had told me before, he said, you're outgrowing downstairs. We're going to have to get you situated to be up in the master bedroom. And so I was like, yeah, da, 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 da. And so he, when he looked in that playpen, I promise y'all. <laughs> Ooh, baby, listen, honey. Good thing I could hold my bladder because I almost peed myself. I was like. Oh my gosh, he was like, wow. He was like, so, oh, you got all these babies up there? He was like, well, when you got all of these and blah, 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 blah. And that's when the judgment kind of came. But he, he eventually, you know, he got past that. He, you know, he flew me to my first doll show and back again. He's, so he's on and off. And then, you know, he, you know, he would make comments on which ones was cute and who I should sell. And he was never like, oh, you know, invested in like, oh, I'm the papa of this baby or role playing with me or anything like that. Now, once, twice he did with Paris, he was watching a football game and Paris was laying on the bed and the silver fan was going. I noticed he kept covering her up because I guess he thought she was going to get cold. But other than that, n no. So that question lasted a long time, took me down memory lane. See, I talk too much. That's why I'm a YouTuber. But um, so anyway, um, so yeah, so that's been an up and down thing. And then once I started painting and then I started selling, of course, everything to him was about how much money you can make. Oh, you need to sell. Oh, you selling that one? So it was like every baby and that became annoying to me that it was like I and I would always say this and I still say this I am a doll collector I am a doll collector I say that all the time I am a doll collector like I hate that most men think we supposed to make money off our dolls that we got to just sell them or even dolls that I bought from other people he was like well how much can you get for that one if you sell it now like it was a stock market or something so um it really It's nice that he is okay with it, but I try to keep him out of it as much as possible because 
For one, it's not his money. For two, it's not his business. For three, um, he doesn't understand it. And I don't think no one that doesn't really collect these dolls truly understand it. Even if people support you and they, you know, are okay with, you know, um, they're okay with you having the dolls. I don't think they truly, people truly understand the, uh, the hobby if they're not in it. Um, you know, so that part is annoying, but anyway, so that's that. The second question that I get all the time or my kids get, and I did, I've asked my kids this on several lives or videos. Um, how did they feel growing up with the dolls? So let me, let me backtrack and let you guys know that may not been new, may have not been following me when my children was in the house with me and they were younger. When I started collecting these dolls, I think my son was about eight, nine, no, he was probably about nine years old, no, eight, seven, he might have been like eight or nine, and then my oldest was maybe like 13. Um, they were getting to a point where they're not under mommy, they're doing their own thing, they want to play video games, they were getting into iPhones and all that stuff. And so, um, the, so my, my kids were kind of doing their own thing. They, they would come in, they would laugh at the baby sometime. Um, they knew not to really touch my babies, but every now and then, of course, my son or the, the girls would find it funny to pose the babies and change their position when I get home because they knew I would notice and I'm like who who touched my dog and they're like I don't know I told you those things are creepy and they're gonna come alive you know little stuff like that or I would bribe them and say oh I'll take y'all out to Dairy Queen if y'all do a video with me today or um or it was always this running joke like I would get a box opening and I'll always take vacation day for a box open and when I couldn't I would call them did my box arrive did my box arrive and they would just be like ma no or they would just answer for mama no we checked it's not it's not out there it's not it's, it haven't came and i would be like are you sure did you really go check you know so that part but um sometime when i was shopping for the babies they would be like you didn't get us nothing you know type thing so i think to in all fairness i think at some point my kids might have been like, oh, she's always buying for those dolls, you know, but not to a point where they felt neglected, but just being children where children always think everything is supposed to be about them and they think they supposed to get everything. Um, so, yeah, at at some point they probably did say, gosh, mom spent a lot of money on the dolls. I don't know. Um, or at least they they have said that at one point but my kids never missed a beat um they always had what they needed and a lot of what they wanted um but i felt like me as being an adult i'd become a single mother of four children um i, I you know i was divorced and i worked very hard a lot of long hours um, that I deserve to have something for me. Um, I didn't buy designer purses or designer clothes. I wasn't a bougie girl going to get my hair done all the time and my nails and feet. And so the money that I spent on my dolls, I felt like was okay at the time. I did become excessive with my spending later on in the hobby, but at this point, my children were pretty much teenagers all like in high school and or moving out i really got excessive at that point um i think the more my kids grew up and got further away of being their own and the more i got consumed in the hobby it was almost like it was filling the void of them needing me every five seconds if that makes sense. Um, 
then there came a little Gabby and some of you guys may remember when she started popping up in the videos she was almost two years old and so that's when life changed for me I'm gonna stop here and do a part two so you can continue um, just because this video is getting really long so I'm gonna pause and pop right back